Hi, this is Bitluni and today we will make an IoT ping pong LED lamp. It's a super simple beginner project that can be made within one day. The materials are cheap and no expensive tools are needed to make it. You might have seen my last ping pong LED wall video. That was quite excessive and I can only imagine not everyone would rebuild that. So I decided to follow up with another one that is beginner friendly and requires a little bit less space. I have a quick and easy 3D printed version for you as well as a bigger cardboard version. So you can build one even if you don't have a 3D printer at hand. Here are some materials you need. An individual addressable LED strip with 30 LEDs per meter. A Wi-Fi capable microcontroller. I use an ESP32 here. But an ESP8266 would also work. A good USB cable, a power supply and some breadboard wires are enough for a small lamp. For the bigger lamps you will need a thicker 5V power supply. The closed ones with a barrel jack are the simplest and safest solution. That will also require some kind of barrel jack at the lamp as well. But more on that later, let's keep it simple for now. As diffusers we will use some ping pong balls. I linked all the parts in the description and on the project site where you can also find some detailed build instructions. As special tools we need some hot glue to glue on the ping pong balls. A 3D printer comes also handy for the base. Let's start with the basic idea. The cheapest way of making an LED project is to use off-the-shelf components. Our base will be one of the LED strips. These are really cheap. I'm using the RGBW SK6812, but the WS2812B are even cheaper, but they come without an extra white component. Basic ping pong balls glued on are a perfect diffuser and have a nice style. Some of you have been worried this might be a fire hazard. The ones I use are not made of that highly combustible nitrocellulose. It's just some kind of cheap ass plastic. <laughs> the problem why I designed special PCBs for my LED wall is that the strips come in specific LED counts per meter. 30 LEDs is the lowest count you can get, which is a LED spacing of 33 mm. Unfortunately the cheap ping pong balls have a diameter of approximately 37 mm, so it basically doesn't fit. However, if you bend the strip slightly, the distance between the ball centers increases. That means if the strip is glued on an arced surface, we can still use the off-the-shelf components. Since we can get strips that are up to 5 meters long, we can spiral the strip around the tube at a slope that will automatically create a nice coverage of the whole surface. To find out the optimal diameters and LED counts per revolution, I only had to solve a few quadratic equations. Easy. The maximal possible tube diameter seems to be around 33 centimeters. I use diameters here that interleave perfectly row by row. You can find all the values and my 3D models on the project side. I started by designing the 3D models in Blender and printed them with my YouTube magic again. Cool. The winding of the strip starts from the bottom slit. There are small nipples as guidance to get the slope right. Let's glue it on. The top should end like this. We simply cut at the marking right after the last LED. If you never used these strips before, this female connector is the start of the strip. 
For simplicity we can plug in jumper wires directly. On most strips the red wire will indicate the 5 volts. The signal is in the center and the ground on the other side. The ground is connected to the ground of the microcontroller, the 5 volts to 5 volts and the data line to GPIO pin 2. The hole in my 3D design is meant for a barrel jack. But for this low LED count we can also use the 5 volts from the USB. The caps make for a nice finish, but let's test it first. Nice! Ping pong balls next. I put a few hot glue blobs on the LEDs first to let the glue cool a bit before I put on the balls, otherwise the ping pongs might pop. A hot glue blob is also nice to secure the wires from slipping out the connector. Easy as that. Okay, cool. Software-wise, we could write our own code to control it. Hacker mode activated. But there is already a super cool open source project called WLED that comes with a ton of features and even an app. So let's simply upload the firmware and keep it simple. We only need to download the latest binary images. I need the ESP32 bootloader and image. To upload it to the microcontroller I will use the flash tool from Espressive. Bootloader needs to be at address 0 and the image at 10,000. The right port will appear after the device is connected over USB. And start. Once it's programmed it will show as a Wi-Fi access point. Connected to it, you can configure it to connect to your Wi-Fi at home. The microcontroller will provide a web-based UI at the IP address that you specified or the router gave it. MDNS names might also work if you are lucky. In the settings, you can set the LED type and the count. There is also a current limit if you don't have a chunky power supply. An easy overview of the available lamps is provided by the WLED app. You just need to add them to your list. Nice! So, let's build a few more of these in different sizes. For the second one we have the rest of the strip. We can solder on some wires to connect it to the microcontroller and the power. No special lab soldering iron is needed for this. I'm using this $9 battery powered one here. Yeah, good enough. Just make sure there are no shorts. The markings on the strip are helpful to identify the right pad. Since the lamp will be bigger, we will supply the strip from the 5 volts at these thicker wires, the microcontroller will be connected to these thinner ones and supplied from the same 5 volts. Some heat shrink helps to protect from shorts and mechanical stress at the solder joints. Let's glue the strip on.
Adding additional power connections to the end of the strip helps to distribute the current equally. As a touch-up, you can use a permanent marker on the parts of the strip that aren't black. This needs to be done before the ping-pongs are glued on. Okay, cool. To supply enough power, I will use a power supply connected to this spiral jack. I connect it first to the power supply and check with the voltmeter which connection is ground and 5 volts. After soldering on some wires, I use some heat shrink again. Now it can be screwed in the opening of the 3D print. I solder on the microcontroller directly this time and use Vago wire nuts to connect all the thick 5 volt lines and the ground lines to each other. Done! This size is the maximum that fits on my 3D printer. The tube shape is simple enough though that we can make an even bigger version out of cardboard. My smart sheet tells me that I need a tube of 550mm circumference. So I need a square that wide. I add a small strip as a seam to be able to glue it together. The remaining part can be used for a cap later. Glued together, it will look like that. I marked the rows and connected the marks diagonally. Put together, this will make a perfect spiral. Nice. I start to glue on the strip from the end this time. This will ensure that it ends at the top, since I used the complete strip. Okay, you probably managed to make a cleaner cap than that. Electronics next. Since the mail connector from the end of the strip isn't used, we can cut it off and use it at the front. Some electrical tape prevents unwanted shorts here. We can solder the connector to the microcontroller to be able to connect it easily to the front of the strip. I use the Vago wire nuts to connect the 5 volt and ground wires again. If you don't like soldering, a good alternative are these barrel jacks with screw terminals. These are even labeled, so there is no need to measure anything. I however like to check things before I connect to the main circuit. All fine. 
Now we can connect the last wire and the microcontroller. Cool. A scrap wooden slat stapled at the bottom will help to keep the shape. Ping pong's last. Let's see how it performs. Oh wow, looks better than expected. I really like the ambient patterns in the living room. I'm really surprised how this simplified project is still looking great. It's beginner friendly and a perfect weekend activity to make with kids. I hope you like it too. Please share your creation with me on Twitter, Instagram or Discord. I'm really curious. A big shout out to the WLED devs which made an awesome piece of software. We will take a look at the other features in another episode, so subscribe to not miss that. A big thanks to all my supporters and I see you next time. Bye!